The world of One Punch Man is one of heroes and monsters. It is the Hero Association's sworn duty to protect the populace and eliminate monstrous threats. Threats that may be furthermore designated specific disaster levels. That of wolf, tiger, demon, dragon, and finally, god. And so in turn, the heroes also follow along a hierarchical classification system. That of C-class, B-class, and A-class. However, in recognition of certain heroes being capable of consistently thwarting threats of considerable power that others fail to, the designation of S-Class Hero came to be. Entities of such reliably considerable strength that the association mostly treats them each like secret weapons, reserved for only the most dire of circumstances. However, as is to be expected from systems like these, there are of course faults to be found. The ranking of heroes, for instance, isn't solely based on strength, as an amalgam of things are taken into consideration. However, with this video, we instead intend to present you with the actual top 10 strongest heroes in One Punch Man. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to let us and YouTube know by dropping a comment and subscribing to Plot Armor if you have not already. But with that, let us begin. Number 10, Watchdog Man. If we know one thing about this story, it is to not judge a book by its cover, and Watchdog Man is a perfect example of this. Unlike other S-Class heroes, Watchdog only operates in a single location. His home, Q-City, is considered to be the most dangerous city in terms of the number of monsters and their average disaster level. Yet even when faced by exceedingly threatening circumstances, Watchdog always keeps things under control and has never actually been known to exert himself in any of his fights. We truly don't know all too much about this guy, especially now considering he was not involved in the Monster Association arc really, but physically, he is an absolute marvel. His strength is considerable, allowing him to one-shot threat level demon entities with ease. When 30 Monster Association forces ganged up on him, he managed to swiftly take them all out, emerging victorious without even a single scratch. His sense of hearing and smell are so impeccable that he can immediately detect any threats that enter Q-City. Now, Watchdog's fight against the hero hunter Garo speaks volumes as to just how capable of a combatant he is. Garo, who prior to this fight, had proven his strength against the S-Class hero, Tank Top Master, and several of his comrades simultaneously, followed by his fight against the S-Class hero, Metal Bat. Meanwhile, when it came to facing Watchdog Man, having even studied his moves prior to their encounter, Garo was absolutely destroyed. In fact, he was played with. He couldn't land a single attack and was just getting knocked around, only managing to survive because he had fled outside of Q-City. Now certainly Garo's strength has only grown with time, but for Watchdog Man to have so effortlessly pushed this guy around despite him already being a threat level dragon is insane. S-Class heroes are expected to be able to defeat threat level dragon threats by their lonesome yes, but not necessarily with ease. Number 9, Drive Knight. Sorry, Genos, but the strongest cyborg in the Hero Association is in fact this especially calculated combatant. Unlike most S-Class heroes, Drive Knight is far from overconfident and absolutely knows his own limitations and never underestimates his adversaries. That being said, he does seem to be pretty lacking in the empathy and morality departments. He's the sort of hero to gather sufficient information before ever engaging and refuses to ever allow an enemy that has observed his abilities to survive as to avoid a similar deduction of information against him. Certainly the most notable aspect of this guy's fighting capabilities may be found in his tactical transformations. Thanks to his shape-changing box, Drive Knight can almost instantly shift his combat style, strengths, and weaponry, depending on the situation. Knight Form sees him shift into a sort of mechanized centaur, providing an increase to speed and leg strength. Chariot turns him into a motorcycle that is of course pretty fast and also sports missile systems, anesthetic gas, and a corrosive solvent. Flying Chariot turns him into a hefty, rocket-powered fighter jet that is ideal for aerial threats and possesses energy blasters along with the ability to detach from the wings, allowing them to become energy blasters as well for the sake of supporting fire. Silver creates a sword of variable length for Drive Knight, which may be used in tandem with his various other forms and may be dual wielded as well. Bishop is his mostly defensive form that turns him into a bulky robot capable of sustaining heavy damage. Gold form is one that serves to incinerate adversaries and raises his body temperature to absurd levels. 
And finally, there is Tactical Combination, which allows Drive Knight to fuse with another mechanical entity, either a cyborg or a robot that possesses an energy core. And hell, even his shape-changing box can be used as a weapon itself, turning into a saw blade or a cage. And there may very well be even more ways to use this stuff that we have yet to see. Drive Knight's greatest feat thus far has been his victory over the Monster Association's executive, Nyan, a creature of threat level dragon. And Nyan was no joke, but to be fair, Drive Knight admitted that his victory was thanks to the monster's overconfidence and its own prior research. But listen man, pretty much all of these powerful monsters are full of themselves, and studying enemies is what Drive Knight does. He is a master strategist, so he's more likely to win a lot of fights than not. Number 8. Super Alloy Dark Shine. This absolute unit of a man boasts what is perhaps the greatest physical strength among the S-Class heroes. Not only that, but he can withstand the most direct physical punishment as well. He is a hand-to-hand -hand fighter that uses his body like a weapon. And even with it being as massive as it is, Darkshine is still incredibly fast with plenty of stamina to boot. Thanks to Dr. Kuseno's simulations, we know that at full power, after 15 minutes of unending combat, Darkshine would be able to emerge victorious against Carnage Kabuto, a threat level dragon entity that we know from the early House of Evolution arc. To this guy, Genos was a joke, so yeah, a very powerful creature indeed. Now, in recent times, Darkshine hasn't looked so hot, and that's because of his fight against Garo. During that fight, Garo evolved, and Darkshine subsequently degraded. Now, don't get me wrong, he's still really strong, sure, but in the face of a high dragon level threat, he, for the most part, falls apart. Number 7. Atomic Samurai The greatest swordsman in the world, capable of unleashing 100 sword slashes in a second. This man can turn a toothpick into a lethal weapon, laying out whole mobs of monsters with ease. He is damn good, and he knows it. So much so, that he at times refuses to acknowledge those he considers to be weak or beneath him. He is even capable of ranged attacks as he motions his blade in a way that sends condensed air towards his opponents. His strength is said to be nuclear powered, and against most adversaries, doesn't even allow enough time for reactions. According to Darkshine, half Monster Garo would have perished against him before even being able to display his own techniques. And now, Atomic is even more powerful on account of the legendary Sunblade, a power he has yet to completely master, but one that nearly proved fatal for Homeless Emperor and even severed the arm of the terrifyingly powerful Golden S, who had previously treated Darkshine like a ragdoll. Number 6. Flashy Flash Alright, so placing Flashy Flash above Atomic was a tough decision for sure, but one I definitely have reasoning for and stand behind. Aside from Blast, Flashy Flash is easily the fastest S-Class there is. I mean, even Saitama recognized the guy's speed. Flashy Flash is also very tactical, being able to determine a person's weight and biological sex based solely on their footsteps. And he too was believed by Darkshine to be able to take out half Monster Garo before he could even do much. Flash wields a sword, yes, which mind you, he is exceptionally capable with, but he also attacks by kicking at accelerated speeds. Now, according to the One Punch Man Encyclopedia, Flashy Flash is an 8 in stamina, a 6 in intelligence, a 7 in endurance, a 10 in power, an 8 in effectiveness, and a 9 in fighting ability. Atomic has the exact same stats, with a few exceptions. Atomic has one more point than Flashy Flash does when it comes to stamina and endurance with a 9 and an 8 respectively. However, Flashy Flash has two more points of intelligence than Atomic does, and I honestly believe that that intelligence factor cannot be understated, as in his arrogance, Atomic woefully underestimated Black S and continued to one trick with his sword despite it clearly not working in his favor. Now granted, this was a horrible matchup for him, but even still, if he was smart enough to use the blunt side of his sword instead, he would have at least had a fighting chance. The Flame Blade is a different story, yeah, but he can only handle its power for a few seconds at most, and Flashy Flash is way too fast for him to get a hit on. But getting back to Flashy Flash himself, this man is truly incredible. And that is absolutely made clear to us with his fight against Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame. 
two extremely fast ninja combatants who began their fight against Flashy Flash at threat level demon in their human forms. And furthermore, it is said that if these two had become heroes instead of monsters, then they would have immediately became S-Class heroes. Yet at this level of power, Flashy Flash was having no trouble with them at all. Later on in the fight, however, they would unveil their monstrous forms, which were both a threat level dragon. And mind you, all throughout this fight, Flashy Flash was being exceptionally calculated and deductive. His opponents continued to shift the terrain, and he remained unfazed and adapted immediately. He not only held his own, but excelled in his own, and again, thanks to his versatility beyond the blade, was able to stun even these raging monstrosities with his kicks alone. He concluded the fight in a single strike with his ultimate technique, Flashy Slash, a move that outside of entities like Saitama was virtually unavoidable. And listen, the entire fight against these two threat level dragon adversaries, Flashy Flash, was simply waiting for an opportunity to kill them both simultaneously. Which is to say, that any point during this fight he could have easily killed either one of them. And the reason he didn't was because he did not want them to truly recognize how outmatched they were and flee, as otherwise there wasn't another S-Class on the mission who could handle their speed. That if these two had ganged up on anyone else besides him, that person would have more than likely died. Flashy Flash is an absolute beast. Number 5. Silver Fang an elderly martial artist that despite his age, remains one of the greatest martial artists in the world. In the past, Darkshine convinced Bang to face him in a sparring match, and despite his best efforts, again and again, each and every one of Darkshine's attacks were deflected and redirected. Seeing as this was a sparring match, Bang certainly didn't take it upon himself to harm Darkshine, but despite Shine's superior physicality, he was nowhere near a match for Bang. And pretty much the same was the case when sparring against Metal Bat, as he easily repelled and avoided each swing until Metal Bat was too tired to keep going. Metal Bat being a hero especially known for his incredible stamina. Bang is faster than Metal Bat, Prisoner, and even Atomic Samurai, who is known to kill enemies before they can even realize he has moved at all. Atomic likes to think of the old man as his rival, but he is out of his depth. Bang is also crazy durable, having taken hits from Elder Centipede, a creature that even Blast in the past failed to kill. And Bang emerged with only minor damage. He may not be as spry as he once was, but this guy's stamina is no joke and most times feels almost endless. Bang himself is considered to be the greatest treasure of martial arts. The man has created two incredibly devastating fighting styles. That of the Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist, considered to be the ultimate defensive technique, and the Explosion Release Fist, an incredibly destructive and aggressive style that Bang has since retired and sealed away. And if this man's strength was for any reason in question, his fight against a fully evolved monster Garo should certainly clear that up. Garo is pretty much a perfect stress test considering all the opponents he has faced at this point, including S-Class heroes. At only the halfway point of his evolution, Garo had Darkshine crying and cowering in fear. Garo, who according to one, is on par with Boros. And that statement was from 2016, so it's quite possible that Garo has exceeded that level by now. To be real with you, Garo may simply be considered a deviant Bang in his prime had his brother not been there to rein him in. Bang is most certainly about that action. Number 4. Metal Knight Dr. Bofoy is an incredibly secretive and mysterious individual, but if we are to believe the sentiments of others, this man is absolutely dangerous. Unlike everyone else so far, the doctor himself isn't much of a fighter at all. However, he does possess an absurdly genius intellect, and is perhaps one of, if not, the smartest character in the series. The weaponry he has created is incredible. And for that matter, Metal Knight was believed by the Monster Association to be one of only four heroes who could defeat Elder Centipede by their lonesome. Yet the full extent of his arsenal's destructive capabilities are unknown even to the Hero Association. And according to Child Emperor, the power of said weapons was well beyond that of any single hero. Child Emperor, who happened to be the Doctor's former protege. The very same genius intellect Child Emperor, whose weaponry was enough to defeat the threat level dragon resurrected Phoenix Man. The Doctor is the very same mind behind the virtually impenetrable defenses of the Hero Association's headquarters. 
he is a man that Drive Knight fears has the potential to take over the world with his army of robots. With presumably a heft of information on most of the Hero Association's strongest members, Dr. Beaufoy may very well be one of the most dangerous individuals in the world, willing to use the threat of the Monster Association to his own advantage. Number 3. Tornado of Terror Tatsumaki is a weapon of mass destruction given tiny form. She is considered to be the Hero Association's ultimate weapon, as truly, her power is so incredible that virtually no being could ever defeat her with conventional means. She is by far the most powerful esper in the series and has such an absurdly vast array of capabilities at her disposal. Flight, telepathy, telekinesis, expansive barriers, Tatsumaki has it all. Every other Esper in the series, including the mighty Esper Psychos, was pitiful compared to her. And even when Psychos fused with Monster King Orochi, despite their terrifying might, Tatsumaki was still able to hold her own. And despite sustaining a lot of damage, that was for the most part on account of her care for others. For most of the conflict, Tatsumaki simply couldn't go all out in fear of killing every other S-Class present inadvertently. She is so strong that she needed to be handicapped in this way, otherwise she would have trivialized the threat entirely by her lonesome. In an interview, one expressed that in perfect condition, Tatsumaki would certainly have defeated Golden S, who we know to be way too strong. Furthermore, according to him, in most cases Tatsumaki would defeat Mob, the main protagonist of his other series, Mob Psycho 100. And mind you, Mob in his world is pretty much the Saitama of Espers. However, he did also admit that if Mob were to get really serious, the answer wouldn't be so clear. Tatsumaki can level whole cities in an instant and at a whim. And so in terms of feats that we have actually seen for ourselves, Tornado of Terror is by far the strongest S-Class hero. Number 2. Blast. Yet another mysterious anomaly. And despite not having seen his feats, we know he is nothing to play with. Known as the man that sits atop the hero world, Blast is the number one hero. Fubuki even credits Blast's power to be on par with King's. And whereas King's strength is a false exaggeration, Blast's is the real deal. For them to be comparable should express just how strong this man is. And with King being essentially the proxy for Saitama's power, Blast is more than likely the closest character aside from maybe God to Saitama's strength. In fact, Blast only emerges to aid the Hero Association when humanity as a whole is in peril. What in other words, is a threat level God appearance. It is speculated that he may possess some degree of psychic and or mind reading abilities. He, like Saitama, is faster than Flashy Flash and can freely play around with a god cube as if it were a toy despite its uncanny weight which not even Flashy Flash could lift. And finally, he has access to dimensional travel. We know very little about this man, but what we do know is that he is really, really strong. Number 1. Caped Baldi As if you didn't already know who the top spot rightfully belongs to. This hero for fun is more than just the strongest hero, but is also the most powerful being in existence. Saitama is unfeasibly strong, fast, and resilient. Nothing in the series has successfully harmed him physically or been able to withstand a true, unrestrained punch from him and live. He is simultaneously an unstoppable force and an immovable object that trivializes any and every threat. Forget nothing being able to take a serious hit from him. Nothing has ever taken a serious punch directly from him before. What they end up being obliterated by is in reality just the aftermath of his fist hitting the air. His power is so incomprehensible that most minds immediately attempt to rationalize it as something else as such a realization may be reality shattering. I mean, even those who somewhat know what he is capable of still have no idea what he is capable of. Saitama is a defier of logic and cannot be placed on the same scale as any other entity in this world. And perhaps if Blast hadn't entered the fray when he did, he would have very well punched God itself. I mean, I could go on and on listing this guy's feats, but he has too many, and considering all that he can do, it would be no different from me commending you for surviving your fights against single ants. 
And so there you have it guys, the actual top 10 strongest heroes in One Punch Man. I'm really curious what you guys may think about this list of ours. If you agree or disagree with anything said, we would love to hear it. Admittedly, Zombie Man's resilience and Child Emperor's ingenuity nearly got them a spot, but really and truly, Watchdog Man is a different breed, and so they would really have it rough against him. If you'd like to see more One Punch Man content from us, again, let us and YouTube know by dropping a like and subscribing to Plot Armor with notifications on. Because when it comes to bringing you some of the best One Punch Man content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.